My name is Jenny. Um, this is my little store called Verachen. My background was actually design. After I graduated from university, I went and worked for an architect as a junior interior designer, which was what my training was, and I hated it. It was a desk job and I was not trained for a desk job. I quit my job after my probation ended and I went back to retail. And a few years later, this store was born after a, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of sourcing. And it's an eclectic little shop. It contains pretty much stuff, as you can see, mm -hmm. but mostly pretty things that I see fit to stock. <laughs> that there is for you. I do get a lot of people that call me Vera, they just assume that is my name. In the beginning, the shop was, um, we were tossing out between store names and the story that I tell most of my customers is that the Vera comes from the perfume, which is one of my favourite fragrances, which is by Vera Wong. And Chan literally means miss. But what it was actually from, even before that, was actually a character that I created in the Guild Wars computer game. <laughs> it was my first ever character that I have ever created in online playing and her name was Vera Chen. <laughs> she was a, a pretty little character who wore fancy clothes and walked around casting magic spells at mo imaginary monsters. <laughs> and I took her personality and I kind of built the store around her. So she has a very quirky sense of taste, she has her own very personal style, and this, I wanted it to be her place, really. I am a little bit of a gamer, just a little one. I like all the little indie games that's created by a lot of different people around, and there are exploring things that you can do, there are building things you can do, and I think it's a fantastic thing to do. Um, when I first came in contact with Bitcoin, it really was to satisfy curiosity. There was this virtual currency that everybody was mentioning. I knew pretty much nothing about it. And the first time I heard of the name, I really thought it was an actual physical coin that people were exchanging. And it was only after the language learning class that was run by you that I got more information and I read up on it. And I thought it was a fantastic little initiative taken by the people. It was something completely new. Um, that's something completely different from what we've known. Even though in the very beginning before banking, peer-to-peer -peer transactions were actually really quite common between the man with the chickens and say the man with the carrots. They would exchange goods and services in exchange for goods and services. And in a way, this is kind of bringing back about people's power within what they choose to do and how they spend their money. And I really quite like that. And the fact that I don't have to pay bank fees is fantastic. <laughs> I pay over a thousand dollars every single year between just tiny little frivolous bank fees. And given how much the banks make out of your personal accounts, my personal account, everybody else's credit accounts, there are fees, there are charges, there are interest rates. They make so much money already. They don't have to take any more, but they do. Still, every single day, every month, everybody gets billed. And I really don't understand why. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's money within your hands. You have the power, you have the controlling share of exactly what you hold. And there is no need for banks to take a cut out of that. And they don't have to. Mm. Oh, the ATO ruling, I don't really actually have too much to say to it. I understand that the governments have to do what they do to actually reign control over the people to a certain extent. And, well, obviously they see fit to make those, well, make those choices that they did make. And there's not too much I really can say about it, to be honest. Mm. Were you surprised? Not overly, actually. Not really. Yes, it's, you, it's something that you can kind of see it coming. And I guess the Australian government sort of held off for it as a bit longer than some other countries. You have people like China, for example, that said yes and they said no and they said yes and they said no. And, but these sort of things, it's bound to happen. The government has a certain responsibility over all the people and especially the banking industry and they can't let something that is going to challenge that particular power, so they make decision accordingly. Mm. What do you do? <laughs>
we need the government at the end of the day still. Without it, uh, it's just, yeah. That's okay, we can wrap it. Hmm? Did you want an actual gift wrapped? We can, I don't mind. Hmm? All right, so. so now our shop is geared up to be able to accept Bitcoins. I don't have to personally be here to go through a transaction. Um, the staff here knows what to do now and it's all very straightforward, very simple. And I do have a few stories. My personal favorite one is that I had somebody called up so that they can come to the store to use their Bitcoins because they were from a very small town somewhere near Sweden, which in the town itself, there were no businesses that accepted Bitcoin. So they had a shopping spree. <laughs> it was a private shopping tour just for the two of them. And they picked up quite a lot of goodies. Right the shopping tours have actually been great, great fun. They come, they thrift, they find things. Our system's also geared up to print up that the receipt to say that you have paid in Bitcoin instead of credit or cash or miscellaneous. And the cufflinks, we do make uh, customized Bitcoin products, uh, whether it's jewelry or accessories. But yes, you can print up your own logo and you can bring your own design and we can make them to order. Okay. Can, can Black and silver, so this is it's very black. Yeah, so black, black, the term. We have been interviewed by people for their thesis, interviewed for by people for articles that they write. Um, there was the Time Out magazine that came in and did a very quick little interview about the store on Bitcoin as well, I believe. There's a man that sent me a survey. He was from the a university somewhere in New South Wales. He was doing his university's final year thesis, and that was a survey on Bitcoin, which we filled out and then forwarded back. So all you have to do is scan that QR code right there. And then, once it's you press send, Broadcasting transaction. Then, there you go, you hear that beep? There you go, that's updated now. The actual Bitcoin itself has a lot of richness to it. It brings people's sense of curiosity, you can start conversations on it, and the people that use these Bitcoins, at least from my perspective, there is a sense of loyalty for the people that use these Bitcoins. They go and find businesses that specifically accept Bitcoins because for them, it's their place. They can claim it, they can own it, and it's a fantastic working relationship you build with your customers. The companies that I deal with in local Australia, they're the artists who work on piece by piece which some of them has never heard of Bitcoin, some of them are too scared, some of them are just not interested. And the bigger companies that I deal with, they would never even touch it. And I don't understand why. It would have been over a year since the times that I have been accepting Bitcoins. The first $5 that I bought was $103.60 something cents. And then since then, it has gone all the way up to about $1,400 per Bitcoin. And then it's dropped down to two something at somewhere along the lines. And now it's stabilizing and <laughs> it's been a roller coaster, but it's been fun. My immediate family, they talk about it and it's something that they find quite fascinating. My friends, they definitely all know about it and they see it as a positive thing. But until more people start accepting Bitcoin, I still think that's where the boundary lays. It, it's up to businesses, it really is. It's up to small businesses to push the medium businesses, to push the larger businesses to actually start accepting Bitcoin. With more places accepting, more people will be willing to actually trade with it. And there is so much potential. I honestly believe that if you have coins, you can spend it, you can keep it, people can do whatever they want with it. But I honestly believe that Bitcoin will have a brighter future. We're just seeing the beginning of it. Mm -hmm.